the balcony. Go to the balcony. I got the balcony. Left side is clear. Lock, peek around that corner, see what you see. I got a couple of windows, watch above you. You have a door here, locked. Very moving. Alright, stack on the right side of the door. Let's breach this open. Hold your fire! Do it, Jay. Breaching. Here we go. Pushing the back. They're watching the back hallway. Contact to the right, heavy contact. Pushing forward. Contact down. Vaulting over. Vaulting over. Contact. Man, has it been a minute since the last time we talked anything about this game? Well, today they just released another sit rep. This one is called Sit Rep Breaching Preview. Clearing a building in Felucia always begins with the building before it, said by Sergeant Jason Kyle. And they showed off a bit of gameplay here, so I guess I'll just go through this little article here and uh, talk a little bit about the video. As we've been promising for some time, we're now ready to begin the series of sit reps about breaching and marine tactics, starting with some things that made breaching in Felucia different than other games have explored. Sergeant Kyle emphasized to us, clearing a building in Felucia always begins with the building before it. Before Marines and soldiers could solve a problem, they had to tackle the problem that preceded it. Combat operations presented a series of challenges that were in a constant motion, and the ability to make split-second decisions meant the difference between mission failure and success. Servicemen and women often applied the OODA loop, short for Observe, Orient, Decide, Act, to work through the ever-changing web of conflict presented by urban combat. However, the the observation phase in Felucia was vastly different than video games have explored in the past. Across the last couple of decades, players in tactical games were not only given the tools to survey enemies behind a door, but they were also allotted the respected time to do so. In Felucia, none of this is possible as Marines and soldiers were continually operating in a hostile 360 degree environment. The threat of the enemy was constant, pressure was high, and fire could come from any direction at any time. Let's also not forget that none of them carried the the optical devices needed to gain visibility through doors and walls. Before breaching a building or a compound in Felucia, it's essential to take a moment to pause, listen, and observe across the entire fire team. How many windows does the building have? Are insurgents visible from the outside of the compound? What material is the door made of? Can you hear anyone inside? Orientation and decision phases follow immediately afterwards. With heavy communication between the fire team on threats, roles, and responsibilities, and changing variables in combat, enemies could be flooding the first floor, and the only viable entry point is on the roof. Perhaps mortars are raining down on the rooftop. What about the back door? Are there alternate routes available? Finally, the action phase pieces all of it together. As a unit, fire teams should execute breaches with violence and speed to achieve momentum. Overwhelm your target with firepower and force and hold every piece of covered ground. And communication certainly doesn't stop once inside. Immediately call out open doors and windows and cover them with your weapon. Once you achieve your foothold, ensure momentum by moving quickly to the next branch. So, here's a one minute introductory look at breaching and room clearing in six days in Felucia before we break for the holidays. We'll be going into more details early next year about the various ways players can breach doors, how to use observation before entry, as well as picking the best entry point and techniques. Okay, cool. So you already saw it in the beginning, but let's just go through it to see what I see. So obviously we got some radio chatter that sounds like it's in game. He opens up with point shooting, it looks like. You can actually see names above them. This is uh, a bit of immersion breaking, but how else are you supposed to know who's who? This is kind of the problem that I have with Ready or Not and trying to figure out who exactly is who? So we just saw a leaning mechanic there. He aimed and then he put his gun down. I'm trying to figure out what those symbols on their heads mean. What is this supposed to be? That guy had a different symbol. 
Maybe each symbol has something different to do with their job or something? What gun is this guy holding? Is he holding the same weapon? Because it looks like this dude has a scope and this one doesn't. They both seem to be privates. They all have different symbols here. A, line, and an arrow. That's interesting. I wonder what that means. Maybe everyone gets like a different role. Another thing that I noticed is that there's actually four guys this time around. Before we've only seen like three, like one, two, and this dude that's playing like right here. It seems like there's going to be at least four people now. That's kind of cool. Hold your fire. Do it, Jay. Reaching. Oh, and this is where we get a look at the reaching. It seems like he has some sort of battering ram that magically appears in his hands. Oh, no, wait. That looks... That's a hammer. Uh, looks like a sledgehammer, actually. Tiny one. Contact. We just heard some of the bad guys in the background there. So I don't even know what the hell they said there. It's interesting. We see a bit of a lean here, and it's actually a tiny lean. It's interesting. It's interesting when he's not like looking at the weapon. It's kind of blurry there. I think that's supposed to be motion blur, but for the gun, I guess. I'm not a fan of that, but you know, it's whatever. So I guess it's just a setting that he has when you aim it. You just, you know, go to point shooting, I guess. Got a prompt there for vaulting over. So they have like two floors that are kind of like on the outside. That's kind of interesting. What's the benefit of that, I wonder? So he just killed that guy right there. Vaulting over. Vaulting over. Contact. So he decided to vault over when he doesn't know if the room is clear? I mean, that looked like a whole animation right there. It's a long animation. I would have like tossed a grenade in there first before going in, but that's just me. And it just ends right there with a little bit of shooting in the background. So overall, I thought this was kind of cool. The gameplay is pretty good. It does seem to be a little choppy here and there with the players in there. But I mean, aside from that, it looks like it's coming along. Uh, we definitely saw some new things here. Finally, we're getting more stuff for this game. But man, it, <laughs> when was the last time we talked about this? Last time was five months ago. Damn, it has been a hot minute. But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to Six Days in Fallujah. Maybe we'll see it in another six months and uh yeah tell me what you think down below because i'm gonna get the hell up out of here thank you all for coming out to watch and uh i will catch you in the next one so long farewell goodbye